This hangout on air is live, and you caught me in the middle of flossing. Yep. I did half of it. Right now, I am in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, right in the midst of our retreat. Pretty crazy, huh? What you see right here is sugarcane. I'm almost done, guy. I got one more section of teeth. What you see over there, that is our sugar cane machine. It's a hand crank. Doesn't touch metal, so it actually comes out yellowish versus green, oxidized green. Takes manpower, three people. Anyway, the reason I'm flossing my teeth is because I just finished a raw meal. Being, ca being catered by raw food chef Antonio. All two weeks long at this raw food retreat. Um, as many of you know, I've been in Vil um, Ojai, California. And I flew down just for this retreat that we planned six months ago. And then right after this, I'm going back to the girls, right back in Ojai, California. We're running the entire business over there. It's the second day of the retreat. It started last night. Um, we just had dinner, all you can eat buffet. It's been incredible. I've been speaking all day long. That's what today is the most crucial day of them all. So I spoke all day long. And now um, people are finishing up dinner. And a lot of people are doing enemas right now. After today's talk, so they just want got to do it. <laughs> they want it. They, it's all choice. It's all optional. But everyone's doing enemas. They're all get, getting the water from the purified water kitchen here, and they all went to their rooms. And there's some people eating lunch, and there's someone in the hyperbaric chamber right upstairs. Um, yeah, there's about 25 people here. We're rocking it live. I missed lunch because I had to take a break and do some computer work while everyone had lunch, but I've been speaking all day. They made falafels, I heard, and it was incredible. And what we do at these raw food retreats is every morning there's a breakfast buffet, all you can eat, and it's crepes with like other things. It's different every morning, but there's crepes every morning, and then there's like a fig jam, a mango jam, a pineapple jam sometimes. There's like leek spread, which is an onion, like close to an onion. Uh, chia pudding, cashew spread, almond butter, fruit, like ripe mangoes are in peak season right now. We are going nuts so with mangoes. We've seriously got like 200 mangoes over here. And we are freezing a bunch of them. And we just had mango ice cream. It was like ripe mangoes frozen into, made, into ice cream. I've never had such a good ice cream in my life. Um, we're also cutting up mangoes and dehydrating them um, for jams and stuff like this that Antonio makes. And that's gonna be used also at next year's retreat. We're stocking up big time with uh, mangoes. So every morning we have this uh, crepe buffet. You can meet my dogs. This is Jade, everybody. We have, a, we have these buffets, all you can eat. And then dinner time, we have like salad spread buffets and then um it's all you can eat dinner and that's where the um the dessert was mango ice cream today what's up jade and then um during lunch is one of the most fun meals what we do what antonio does is we make he makes a gourmet lunch today it was the falafels i'm not supposed to say anything but tomorrow is going to be the raw pizza Someday he'll make burgers. Another, that's Laylee. Another day he'll make uh, crab cakes, mock tuna, nori rolls, sushi, raw sushi, of course. That's Kyra right there. She misses me the most. She's the newest baby dog. That's Jade's baby. And so on, so on, so on. In the background there's Marina. That's Antonio Marley's daughter. That's the kitchen. If we were to flip this computer around, you'd see the pool right here. Um, I think lots of people are going to be here in a bit. I think they're going to have a little hangout party. Um, yeah. So uh, 
let's start this ball game. What we're going to do is first get the questions. What kind of questions do we have today? Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. There we go. Oh, there's lots of questions because I didn't wasn't here last week. I wonder if they're combined. Yeah, they are. Okay. Amber Leon. Oh man. I guess like I missed all these questions. Okay. I'm gonna do something different today. <laughs> and start from the top and go down. A day ago. Debbie wrote, Debbie Bullion wrote, I made Angela's version of energy soup. I added some orange juice to it because my blender doesn't work well with some liquids. It turned out awesome. Are you and Angela going to do any more recipe videos? Absolutely. Um, I checked on her, by the way, but you can look at her again. I didn't do it recently. Okay. Make sure she looks, yeah. Someone's in the hyperbaric chamber, everybody. So, energy soup. Um, Yes, we're going to be doing more, being, doing more recipe videos. Um, me, and, I, me and Angela have been working around the clock. Unfortunately, we had some bad apples in the business who were stealing money, dismissing our valued customers, destroying our business without even knowing. This has been going on for a few months, and we caught it in the nick of time, or we would not even be here. So that was very unfortunate, but... Um, it seems like we did catch it in the nick of time and we are rocking the house, but we're literally working around the clock right now. So it's been hard to do videos, but I'm, I'm going to do them anyways. Um, the contest, everybody, we did one video on the contest giveaway. We haven't given anything else away. It's, I'm at the retreat right now for two weeks, so I'm guessing I'm going to be back January 5th. I'm just going to come into the warehouse and we're going to randomly pick. We're going to do the rest of it all in one go, I think, in one video for the contest. And in that contest, every, there's going to be so many people getting free things, it's ridiculous. I would say that it may very well be you have a 1 in 10 chance of winning. That's pretty crazy. That's how much stuff we're probably going to give away. 1 in 10. That's 10% of the people who ordered. And we'll continue to order. For those of you that don't know, right now is the largest grandest raw food holiday event we have all year round. We have the 17, once a year, 17 and a half percent coupon code holiday 18. They can utilize on our website. Every order gets a free gift with a cute little personalized card by it from me, Angela and Araya. There's a $10,000 contest giveaway, which you probably saw some of us give, give, give some of the stuff away in the last video. And there's an inventory blowout and January at cost specials and December at cost specials are together. And January's at cost specials are the best I've ever seen. It's absolutely insane. Okay. One of the viewers writes, they must be busy. Isn't Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern? I am losing it. If time changed someone. Hey, Crystal, I'm not seeing any new questions. Is everything set up right here? December. This is December 8th. <coughs> Crystal, where are the today's questions? <laughs> I gotta figure this out here. Ding, 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 ding. I'm Skyping Crystal right now. December 8th questions. How do I, okay, here we go. She's sending me the link. So sure it's, okay. Okay, good. Now we're in business. How come that didn't happen for me when I went to? Okay. Here we go. Sammy writes. Hi, Matt. I have a couple questions for the December 22nd hangout, which is right now. First, I have a spiritual question. You often speak about the importance of spiritual focus, of being present to, and working through the ow, the pain, the suffering. Could you say more about what this working through looks and feels like? That's a loaded question. I'm getting better at sitting with the pain, but what else does one need to do to move it through? What advice would you 
give to someone who is feeling lost in terms of mission, life, purpose? Thank you for the, all that you do. All right, guys. Hey, Walter, you want to say hello to the people on the Hangout? Sure. Where is it? Here we go. That was pretty extreme. What was? It's gone. Oh, you did a bunch of enemas? Yeah. I did uh, five fills. Five fills? You guys, this is Walter. Hi. And he came to this retreat. Are you okay if I tell him things? Absolutely. All right. Walter has type 1 diabetes, and you've had it for how many years? About 40 years. 40 years. And you were also into drugs when you were younger. Correct. And you haven't done any drugs in how long? 26 years. 26 years. As many people know, during this retreat, we're doing the San Pedro ceremony. He's like, nope, I ain't doing it, which is totally awesome. But, you know, you don't want to dive back into that. Yeah, no, who knows? Maybe it might change. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked a little bit more about it, how it's different with the purpose and stuff like that. But regardless, um, so um, Walter here decided to take a natural path to healing. And the doctor is just dumbfounded by the fact that your blood numbers, and she's just saying, keep doing what you're doing. Maybe you can explain. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, probably for the last five or six years, I would say, with all that I've done along the way, my a ones my uh, hemoglobin A1Cs, which is a measurement of your blood sugars over the last three months, they're always under six, but sometimes they're even under five. So she says, whatever you're doing, like she doesn't really want to know about it, but whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me you're doing raw foods. I don't want to hear about it, but these numbers are good. Sweet. Yeah. I'll get myself in trouble. Yeah, well, I've been doing raw foods for, you know, over 20 years now. So I started with juicy, and I was eating cooked food in the beginning. But in 99, I went completely raw. Right. Right. And, uh, and hence the, the benefits that come along the way. And who right. knows what's to come. That's right. the best part. For those of you that, are, that don't know and are just joining us, we're here live at the Raw Food World Retreat. Walter is a retreat member right here. He's, are you having a good time? Absolutely. The food is great. Awesome. The juices are really super. I'm really excited about the juices. Norwalk juices. Oh, I never got the sheet of what everybody wanted. I'm going to figure out what that is. Who ended up with that? Yeah, we're doing unlimited Norwalk juices. We tried to start out with three, but everyone's getting like 10 now. <laughs> we had to do Aloha trip and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, so um, everybody's loving it here, and um, yeah, so it seems like you're, you just did enemas. Today. Right. Well, yesterday, I did that hike, and boy, that was fantastic, too. Yeah. Right? You did a four-hour hike. You did a four-hour hike. Yeah. Sweet. I mean, and those mountains, they were, they were not, just, <laughs> not just a hike, man. It was a climb. Yeah, it's like straight up to get to the main top part. Yeah, and it's at least 45 degrees the whole way up. Yeah. yeah. We have a little hike around the Ossiander here that people can go on if they like. Yeah. So, yeah, everything went super. Nice. nice. It's, it's kind of neat to be on this. I'm usually on the other side. Oh, you're usually it. watching me? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. People are just finishing up enemas. They're coming back now. People are still finishing dinner and things like that. Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, really good. All right, so I guess I can go back to answering questions. Hey, David, uh -huh. did you heal from anything? Ever? Like, why did you get into raw food? Um, well, originally, I uh, learned about it from a uh, man I met at a vegan convention in 1998 in Olympia, Washington. You want to say hello to everybody? Oh. David here. You have to come over here so people can see. If you want to be, say hello. David here traveled all the way from the government. <laughs> he has he has a position in uh what did you do again? I work in social security as a teleservice representative. Ah, yes. And um you've been into raw foods and he's just extremely happy. Are you okay if I say things like, like Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. 
he's extremely happy to get out of the city and to be in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, which is absolutely beautiful and fresh air you get. Yeah, the air here is absolutely exhilarating. Yeah. I woke up this morning, uh, right after my showers, I took a, uh, several deep breaths of uh, the smell of chlorophyll from bamboo. It's such a contrast from Baltimore, Maryland, where it's so polluted. Right. And, uh, I, if I had my druthers, I would live in a tropical country uh, 365 days a year. Right. <laughs> and I'm experiencing the same thing. I just came from Ojai, California. It is beautiful there, you know, but it's houses on top of houses and just to, you get in the freeway here, if you want to call it a freeway, but it's just like straight <laughs> greenery. It's just like, does this exist? It's insane. It's insane. So you've been into raw food for how long now? Well, I've been doing uh, almost all raw, uh, between 95 and 100% raw uh, since uh, July 31st, 2002. Ah, wow. That's awesome. And the, the uh, book that really got me into raw food when I actually did uh, Throughout July of that year, I was reading uh, Paul Nissan's book, The War of Life. Oh, that's cool. That's what uh, gave me the uh, confidence to uh, put the final nail in the coffin of my uh, cooked food addiction, particularly grains. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that was a good book. There's a lot of interviews from all these gurus in there, a lot of gurus. <laughs> and beyond that, uh, Doug Graham's book, uh, Grain Damage, really helped. Oh, that's cool. Tells you why grains mm -hmm. aren't. So, yeah. Or unnatural for human diet because we're not granivores unlike birds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Sure. Anything else you want to share with these nice folks? Uh, well, uh, the uh, raw vegan diet, uh, not just raw, uh, but vegan. Uh, maybe honey isn't uh, quite as bad nutritionally as dairy and eggs, but ethically it's uh, really an abomination, I think, to uh, what does the bees. But in terms of... Uh, Healing uh, your inner body because your body has a natural tendency to uh, heal itself. That's what uh, detoxification is all about, and side effects, and uh, you know all the uh, physical problems you get from eating the standard American diet. It's the body's constant, never-ending struggle to heal itself, no matter what the human being is con is uh, intentionally consciously doing it to it. The body has some inner wisdom to try to overcome those uh, barriers to human habits particularly of the uh, Western industrialized diet of meat, dairy, eggs, and other animal products. Sweet. Yeah. So uh, when you uh, uh, even try a raw vegan diet for, uh, say, a week or a month, you know, one day at a time, but uh, with some supervision and guidance with the right support system, uh, like Victoria Brutenko, for example, with 12 steps of raw food is a good approach, among others, uh, you'll find uh, amazing difference in your health over the long run. Uh, in the short term, it might uh, you might feel uh, not not in terms of where it does your taste buds, but you might feel some uh, detox side effects and think that means you're getting sick from going raw. But it's quite the opposite because you uh, you're cooperating with your body's desire to heal itself uh, by uh, getting out of the way, like Lauren Lockman used to say, getting out of the way of your body's uh, natural desire to heal. Right. By going with a more natural diet, back to like the Garden of Eden, with, because our bodies are designed as frugivores, not even herbivores, let alone carnivores or omnivores, we're designed to be fruit eaters, uh, mainly fruits, some leafy greens, and minimal amounts of nuts and seeds would be the ideal diet, just like our non human primate cousins among chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and baboons, and so forth. If we're eating more like them, we'd be much healthier as a species. <laughs> cool. Very cool. Right on. And not to mention, I should also point out our healthcare course, even without the single payer healthcare that the rest of the industrialized world has, uh, our healthcare course individually and a society would be much more uh, fiscally conservative. Sweet. We'd be able to have much uh, lower budgets, save more money for exotic vacations, and, and do more to help people who can't help themselves in you know, travel work. You know, we'd have uh, more money for the whole economy to flourish. Right. You heard it from David, everybody. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. Yeah. Cool. Right on. So for those of you that just arrived, we're sitting here live at the Raw Food World Retreat. There's about 25 people here, and uh, we're just rocking it out. A lot of people are doing enemas right now and watching and eating their meal and doing other things. There's someone in the hyperbaric chamber up there and stuff like that. So I guess what I'll do is I'll start getting back to some questions here. 
I'm just answering them out right now. Okay. Yeah, let's check it out. Oops. Where did they go? How many, how many people am I speaking to when I, when I was doing that? Probably about a thousand. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I never had an audience that big before, not even in my little scout uh, court of honor. <laughs> <laughs> David got a big audience. <laughs> uh, okay. So here we go. Uh, she has a spiritual question, guys. Okay. First, I have a spiritual question. You often speak about the importance of spiritual focus, of being present to and working through the ow, the pain, the suffering. Could you say more about what this working through looks and feels like? I'm, getter, I'm getting better at sitting with the pain, but what else does one need to do to move through it? What advice would you someone, to give to someone who is feeling lost in terms of mission life purpose? That's a fully loaded first question, huh? Yeah. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so, okay. So you're saying, okay, can you talk about more about working through this and what it feels like? Okay, generally, a lot of the time, um, what people do is they never even exp are conscious of it um, because generally when a person, what they, what they tend to do is we end up in our mind in loops, like how can we make our life better? How can we make our life better? For example, like for example, um, I'm always giving this example, let's say you were driving your car all by yourself and you're just in that state of misery. Nobody else is around. You're just sitting there and you're just like, oh, life sucks. And you're in this state of, in your mind, how can you make your life better? How can you make your life better? How can you make your life better? And you're thinking like these logical thoughts are gonna give you an answer. But if you were to actually take your focus and attention, which can actually enable you to feel everything in your entire reality, the physical, the spiritual, and everything, you'll notice that there is a suffering happening within your being that is very uncomfortable. And to actually, the first step is to like identify what is going on here. So what you wanna do is take this focus and first feel your entire reality with your focus. And then the next step is kind of like identify the owl. And this focus, what it does when you're in this process is it takes you out of how can I make my life better? How can I make my life better? Because this, these thoughts aren't going to bring you anywhere. And what happens is, what, ha what happens is when you start to do this focus, it enables you to feel everything. And unfortunately, we have a lot of spiritual garbage going on. And when you do this, you actually feel the suffering and misery that you're actually going, that is actually going on in your being. And this is the thing you don't want to be, this is the thing you want to avoid. So the tendency is as soon as you do this focus work, you don't even want to deal with that. So you just go straight back to your mind because you don't want to be here because it's ow. And you go back to your mind thinking, how can I make my life better? How can I make, and you just stay there. And what's happening is our energy is being drained in this process because you're not even there and you're like plugged into this misery that's going on right here. So the key is, it's not about working through the pain and moving through it. It's more about identifying it first and then doing the spiritual work in order to have it eliminated and maybe you're not making the the ultimate moves while doing this maybe you are sitting there and you are each situation it's um something else something new is needed maybe something is so deeply embedded to where it's going to need days or hours of focus in order to get it eliminated from the connecting to your spiritual body, if that makes sense. So it's almost like this: the focus is our grandest spiritual weapon that we have. If there is pain, there's obviously something going on that we want eliminated from inside of our reality on a spiritual level. And it is this focus that enables us to do that. Now there's certain there's so many different scenarios and possibilities in the spiritual world. Like 
that can happen. Um, for example, maybe you have to stare it down like crazy for hours upon hours, or maybe it's just five minutes to where it finally lets go or something. And then maybe you have to stop because now it's gone. And if you don't stop, you're kind of looking for it to come back and it comes right back. It's like you're inviting it back. This is just one possible scenario. Maybe you're not even supposed to look at it in this certain scenario. Maybe you're supposed to just connect and just not react to all the prodding that's going on. Maybe you're being tested at this moment in time. Maybe it's something you need to learn to live with to where it's actually just a vibration. We say we want more spiritual energy. All vibration is just vibration. Maybe this one's an uncomfortable one to you. Um, but if we want more spiritual energy, we've got to understand the good and the bad. And all it is is just a bzzz. It's just a different feeling than like a bliss feeling that of like frills or something that you're maybe used to. So it's almost like we're here on planet Earth. And one of the reasons we're here, I feel, is we kind of got to make up for certain things we did, if that makes sense. And we've got to learn certain things. And I don't know what's going on in your situation, but I'm just trying to bring every different type of scenario to the table here that I can think of, of what can possibly be happening. But it's not always comfortable. This is life. We're not always comfortable as it is. And you're saying, what advice would I give someone to, who feels lost in terms of mission and life purpose? It's doing this focus work to where you are doing your service to what we're the creator kind of deal here. So it's almost like, this focus work um, is doing work for the creator. So when you're dealing with this thing that is always there, you, it, there's a chance that you're not just dealing it within your reality, but it's like it's happening in mere existence that you're dealing with it. And you're helping with the situation as a possibility, as just another scenario. So, in terms of feeling lost in terms of our mission and life purpose, the number one thing that we can do immediately is to simply focus and do the spiritual work to where we kind of clean out our inner terrain of our reality, and that's kind of like doing the work. And then when you start to do this on an ongoing basis and you're successful, you may be gifted more life to where you have even a greater impact. Um, I talked about, about this today, you guys, so you probably heard some of this today. But um, one example might be, maybe you have a child who you have authority over in your family. And you're sitting here, you're, you've made this new mission, it's your goal to do this focus work, and then all of a sudden this weird sex greed thing comes in, and then you do the focus work, and you kind of like move it out. Just like if you were to get angry, you do the focus work to stop the anger in its tracks. It's like you're doing that. And then, so all of a sudden you clean that out, this greed or sex thing that came in, you might not even have realized this, but this might have been from your child and cleaning that out kind of like teaches them how to do it themselves and this might not be the best thing. So it's almost like you're working not only on yourself but others. And then when you continue to do this in service and you have the responsibility and it's shown that you're gonna be doing this on an ongoing basis well and you're not gonna be playing and stuff like this, there's a good chance that you may be gifted more life to where you have higher vibration to impact more people. So that's like a, in terms of life purpose, immediately just bam, go straight to that focus and go to work. It's the best we could do. And it is, life purpose and mission is more comprehensive than just that, but this is, this is pretty profound. It's a huge portion of it. Of course, there's a whole thing about what are you doing with your job and stuff like that. And, you know, that's, that can be important too. But this is like the start and probably the most important. But it's all important, of course. Okay. So someone said they made Angela's version of energy soup. You added orange juice to it because my blender doesn't work well without some liquids. It turned out awesome. Are you and Angela going to do any more recipe videos? I was explaining we're extremely busy right now. But yes, we're going to be doing way more recipe videos and all sorts of things. 
And um, energy soup is an awesome thing. Yeah. They were just saying Ann Wigmore developed that, I think is what you said. No? Okay. Claudia writes, I have a question about processed food. It seems like everything is processed unless you eat fresh veggies and fruit. Is bread processed? It's one of the most damaging processed foods to the human body, unfortunately. Yeah, like the grain damage she was talking about. Are the snacky foods you sell in packaged processed foods? It depends how far you take. I'll, we'll explain this right now. If not, what keeps them safe to eat after a few days? Okay, so people, okay, so the term processed foods isn't really meant to like say anything that's processed. Like for example, maca powder, you could say is processed and then it's put in a bag. Um, that's not the process we're pretty much talking about. Processed food, I like to try to like, maybe processed food isn't the best word to utilize. But um, it's mainly whole foods versus not whole foods, which I'm terming processed foods. So whole foods would consist of anything grown from the earth and from the planet. It's almost like I cr we, we created a line. Anything on this side of the line is healthy and it, God willing in the long run, you can end up degenerative disease free in the long run. And anything that you eat on this side is harmful to the human body in which I term processed foods. And in the long run, you're gonna end, you, you have the potential to end up relying on pharmaceutical drugs because you're doing too much damage to the human body. So it's just a kind of like a guideline that we kind of give, but it's more about what's damaging to the human body and what's not damaging to the human body. It's more important what you don't eat than what you actually eat in order to be healthy. So the foods we sell are on this side of the line. I won't sell anything on that side of the line. That's actually damaging to the human body, if that makes sense. <clears throat> the hangout is going. You want to say hello, Natalie? Yeah. Everybody else has been saying hello. Hi, hey. Mom. <laughs> you think your mom's watching? Hopefully. She better be. <laughs> oh my God. I've been to a lot of retreats, but this is by far the best. Not only is it the best food in the world I've ever eaten, but the hospitality is out of this world. Like any little thing, like they treat you like they would treat their own grandmother. They would do anything for you. Everyone here is so amazing and so nice. I think raw food makes people super nice. Uh, thank you. That was sweet. Aww. Well, I'm going to go get a massage, so I'll talk to you guys later. Cool. Bye. Thanks for coming on. That was Natalie. She's a massage therapist. Um, her mom was here at the last one, uh, Angela Dragoy, and you saw her in one of the press videos. So she's going to get a massage. There's someone in the hyperbaric chamber. There's people doing enemas. There's people eating, and we've got a couple guys here hanging out with us. All right. So... It's 8.30, and there ain't that many questions today. Let's see what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so in terms of processed food, it's not about it being processed and put in a bag or anything. It's just about, like, is it from the earth? Is it a whole food? Is it healthy? And then anything that's not, I kind of deem as processed food. Maybe it's not the best word, but oh well. Okay. Yenny writes, hi, Matt. I'm wondering if Araya takes any supplements, vitamins, or superfoods on a daily basis. If she does, could you share what they are? Thank you. Okay, so Araya, um, what does, she drinks vegetable juice with us. She drinks coconut water. Um, we get them shipped from Florida sometimes, the, the good ones. Um, supplements, maybe I'll put a B12 on her patch on her back when she's not looking. <laughs> like a half of one. <laughs> uh, she likes to eat chlorella tablets like they're candy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, she's doing good. She's doing good. <clears throat> um, there is one thing that we feed Araya that probably um, many people wouldn't approve of. Um, I personally don't eat them, but I feel like it would be the next thing for someone. It's kind of like a, a safe ground thing. This thing has all the omega fatty acids, has B12, has all the other things, um, and she's a growing child. So um, there, she's the only one in the family that we give eggs to um, in order just to make sure we're covering her grounds. 
I don't want to mess around with my child and you know, I don't want her, I want to make sure she grows and her teeth are okay and her bones are okay. So, you know, we take care of her like that. Um, she was drinking vegetable juice every single day, but you know, she's grown up. She's like, no, nah, I don't want vegetable juice or I don't want, I mean, she'll drink it all the time. Sometimes she'll just down it, but, uh, you know, we just want to make sure she's covering her grounds. So we make sure to give her that. And she loves it. Yeah. She doesn't eat them every day, you know, a few times a week. <clears throat> Samuel writes, hi, Matt. I know it's been a while since I've seen your amazing hangouts. So I thought I'd tune in tonight. Awesome, Samuel. I am under the impression that Celtic sea salt is the best sea salt, is the best sea salt you can get right now. And I was on YouTube talking to James destroy disease he thinks that pink himalayan sea salt well pink himalayan salt doesn't come from the sea it comes from the mountain is better than celtic sea salt what is your take on this matter if i had to choose well i mean it, i would probably choose the celtic sea salt but i'm always eating himalayan salt i think they're both fine um you know there's a lot of controversy about the whole fukushima thing and things from the ocean you know whatever but yeah, i don't know it's just like it's all about, is it okay for the human body versus not okay for the human body? It's like more about, is it damaging to the human body? People are asking me at the retreat, you know, I've read all these vegan recipes and nutritional yeast, like they use that, is the nutritional value lost when you cook it? And I'm like, it's not, that's not necessarily as important as, is it damaging to the body when you cook it? And the answer is probably no, it's not that damaging to the body when you cook it. So it's more important what is damaging versus what is nourishing. It's more like, where are you getting your nourishment from? Our solid meals of the day, we get some sort of amount of nourishment, but the best way to get nourishment from what I just is like that, and, you know, getting your omega fatty acids through other means, like, that's where we get our nutrition. So it's almost like a person could literally live off of vegetable juices and cardboard. Cardboard is healthier than McDonald's burgers. I'd rather see someone eat cardboard because it's not damaging to the human body. I'm not saying you should do that type of thing, but it's more important what you don't eat than what you actually eat. <clears throat> All right. Corinne writes, okay. I just visited your online store this evening for the first time and love the variety you offer. So glad you have a place for one-stop online shopping with great prices. As far as protecting yourself from EMFs, give off from phone and iPad, what do you recommend? Since I work on a home, on a desktop computer, eight plus hours a day, and we have Wi-Fi in the house, would you recommend a house device for the breaker box and or EMF protectors for individual electronics or to be worn on my body or all of the above? I'm new to EMF protection and want to protect myself and especially my children from all of it. Would you give a brief breakdown of the name of the products you offer that, they, that they're ideal for and the best economical way to protect everyone and if necessary, to get all the EMF protecting items or which are the best ones to get immediately and eventually build up to all of them that is recommended? All right. <clears throat> I like to go against the grain and um, while EMFs have been proven to be damaging, and it's almost like there's a whole entire, it's, it's like organic. We were, we were speaking at the retreat, and this one woman was like, um, I feed my ch child organic processed foods, <laughs> organic processed treats or something is what she called it, snacks, organic processed snacks. And she's like, it's a step in the right direction. It's organic. And this whole entire organic thing has been taken to like a huge extreme to where they've convinced people to eat processed foods by putting organic on it. Now, if we look at this term, organic processed snacks, if I were to eat, if I were to eat, orga if I were to eat conventional produce that's not organic, I'm going to be fine and I'll, nothing's going to happen to me. But if I were to eat organic processed snacks, I would be a complete mess due to how sensitive I am. So what's more important, eliminating the organic or the processed snack? They've taken it this, to this level to where, oh, it's organic, I can eat it, even though it's filled with refined sugar, processed starches, and other junk. So it's like, 
Now we're looking at this EMF thing, which is a whole other fear realm. And of course, it's not ideal. I'm all for this. But we also have to understand maybe it's not as harmful as the thought of it putting us in fear, the fear of it is as harmful. And before we get into explaining all these different things we can utilize, um, I feel like the number one protection thing that we can have from EMFs is connecting to the creator because what that does is protects you from not only EMFs but plenty more. So it's almost like just do that and then – but um, on another thing that you can do, um, we do have – Okay, you can, but I think the best thing to do is to just go to like an artisan or something and get crystals and put crystals everywhere. Crystals are incredible. I know people who take crystals through those airport x-ray machines and then when they look at the picture, it's, there's like this huge glow and you can totally see that they were protected from it. Um, but also, we actually carry something called QBC pendants, which have nanotechnology crystal in it, a nanocrystal technology, which has been shown to be pretty powerful. And the same company creates home balancers, phone balancers, computer balancers that you can put on your computer or the um, actual plug right here like this and things like this. Um, you could put them – we have cell phone protectors by Wave Shield. You could put it like right on the um, telephone, um, right over the earpiece, and that supposedly helps too. There's something for um, phones called a Pong case, which actually reflects EMFs if you put it on your iPhone, and also increases your signal and stuff like that. Hey, B, you want to say hello? Sure. Everyone else has been saying hello. We've Hola. got B, everybody, has Hi. come on the raw food retreats and is craving... Biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy is what she's craving right now. Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. You, you're only, and cherry cheesecake. And cherry cheesecake. But the raw vegan one. <laughs> The raw vegan one? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you um, came to this thing, and have you cheated yet? Have you gone into town and eaten junk? Or you've been eating? Nope. Wow. She's been eating 100% raw food diet right now. No cheating. No cheating. And now she's going through cravings and wants uh -huh. all of these things. Yep. Yeah. But it's good. Yeah. And um, you said that you used to be healthy on a – yeah, grab it. Better. Yeah, you used to be healthy, um, and you didn't eat processed foods. Yeah, and then like a year ago. Okay, so when I was younger, I grew up vegetarian, and for about ten years, I've been vegan. And I cheated a couple times, and I got extremely sick. So I was like, I'm never doing this again. And then I was raw for about two to three years, completely raw, very religiously. And then this past summer, I started eating a little bit of cooked food. And some of it I was okay with, and some of it I wasn't. And so I've been kind of going backwards, and now I'm trying to get better again. Cool. Yeah. So, so you, you think you're when you leave, you're going to be better or what? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Are you having a good time on the retreat? Yeah, it's good. It's very beautiful here, peaceful. Nice. It's good. The people mm -hmm. are awesome. Nice. Sweet. Thank you. Anything else you want to share with everybody? Um, that, you've got, you got a thousand people going on right now. Everybody should definitely go 100% raw vegan for an extended period of time just for a good detox and cleanse to try it. It's probably one of the best experiences you'll ever experience. <laughs> uh, it's not for the faint of heart. It's pure hell for the first year, at least it was for me. But after that first year, it's like a marathon. After the first year, you're good, and you could pretty much go forever if you wanted to. Just got to work on your willpower. <laughs> so, yeah, young coconuts are awesome. So, wow. That's good. You've been drinking the young coconuts? Yeah. Have you been drinking the juice? Yes. What's your favorite one? What do you mean? Well, we have, like, five different juices here that you can choose from. Oh, the juice. Oh, yeah, have you been drinking them here? Um, I've had the juice, but I was talking about the young coconut, like the oh, yeah. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like my absolute favorite. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Nice. We gotta get more. You guys are drinking that crazy. Uh, yeah, he needs to order more. <laughs> and uh, are you even drinking juices? Um, poquito. Un poquito? Cool. A little bit. Cool. I prefer coconut water. 
So maybe you could tell everyone real quickly the story where you put peppermint. Oh God. Okay, so I'm kind of weird sometimes, and we were camping in a chalet, and it was freezing cold outside. There was snow on the ground. We had no heat whatsoever except for a tiny little fireplace, which put off nothing. And so I was starting to use essential oils, and I thought that it would be a good idea after I got out of the hot shower, when my pores are open, to put on peppermint oil all over my body from head to toe. And it's like probably 45 degrees inside the chalet. That was a very bad idea. Don't ever do it. I didn't even dilute it with coconut oil. Very bad idea. So peppermint oil is good, but use it in the summertime and use it with olive oil or coconut oil. So what happened? What was the result? End result? Um, I felt like I literally wanted to die all night. <laughs> I was shaking and I was freezing and I felt so sick. So it made you even more cold? Uh, yeah. I, I literally wanted to die. Okay, you guys, she's an essential oil expert and she but does these. I've learned a lot now. <laughs> I'm good at it. <laughs> no, she is an essential me. oil expert. This is what she does. Yeah. Okay, so then um, you were in another situation where it was really hot. Oh, God. Okay, so I did the exact opposite. It was in the summertime, it was in the south, it was humid and it was hot. We had no air conditioning, so it's probably like 100 plus degrees inside. So I take another hot shower, my pores are open. I put on undiluted straight cinnamon oil all over my body from head to toe. Okay, before you tell us what it did, what were you thinking it was going to do? Make you warm? I just uh, wanted cold? to be healthy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just okay. thought it was a good idea. I used to do things like this too. Not like with essential oils, but yeah. I once drank a whole entire jar of this zeolite. Like it gone. What happened? I was just vomiting all night. <laughs> it wasn't, um, it was a different kind of, it was like a micronized zeolite. What was that? The first zeolite that came Boyora? out. Yeah, way or oh I drink like an entire because I would take like a couple drops and I felt like my third eye go for a minute. I'm just like, let's take that. I take the whole thing or something. And I was just like, he's crazy. <laughs> so I'm the crazy one. Okay, so what what happened after you put all yeah. this cinnamon oil in the hot? Okay, I start turning red all over and I'm burning and it's hot and I'm burning. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so stupid. I did it again, but the other way. <laughs> so now you were like hot, like crazy in the hot. Very very hot. Yeah. Right. Okay. So uh, cinnamon oil really must always be diluted one to three drops max for your entire body in coconut oil. That's what I would recommend. Definitely not straight anywhere. <laughs> but yeah. Wow. And, and thanks, B. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, oh, the other thing is the best kind of essential oil that I found to use if you want to get organic and like from the best places of the world is doTERRA. My opinion. Are you are you a um, rep for them? I am. Yeah. Cool. What's your website? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> oh my goodness! What an Isn't opportunity! That yeah. I'll tell you later. Uh, uh this video is gonna be over. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Isn't there a way they could search your name or something? Uh, you could. Okay. Firstly, this is B. My name is B. Yes. But what's your real name? I don't even know your real name. I just call you B. Brenna. Brenna? Yeah. B R E N N A? C. Okay, Brenna. Yep. So you. Can I just let you put it on the internet later? Like when I find it? Like when I check? I mean, I can. Just people are going to be watching this. I'm not going to remember to go look at it. Okay. okay. I think maybe it might be Brenna Outlaw at doTERRA.com, but I'm not really sure. You have okay. to check. Well, what, what we could do is um, if you feel so. If you want to go to. Oh. I'm not really online savvy, just to be honest. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's whatever. why. You'll be all right. But, yeah. Cool. Anything else? Uh, I don't think I think of unless you want to share anything last thing. Antonio makes really good spirulina chocolate balls. Oh yeah. Very very good. That was crazy. I think Marley was making those. Oh well, okay. Marley, <laughs> Marley makes them It's good like too. their unit. Yeah. Their team. They're a good team. Yeah. I had one of those. I was flying. You're I was good. I was actually um I've been eating raw chocolate lately and I when I got to Vilcabamba I was just sleeping so much because I've been getting sleep and I was um eating clean, no chocolate, just many idea. days. And I started going through withdrawals, I almost felt like I was getting sick. So I had to take a chocolate ball to stop it and I was fine the next day. Have okay. you ever done a hot like a, a cooled down hot chocolate enema or no? Why? Cool people, down. people use coffee, what about chocolate? I don't know. It's an idea. 
I'm not responsible for anything that happens to you that try it. Like peppermint oil all over your body. Exactly. Kate Magic actually put chocolate in her animals, I believe. Really? Okay. okay. I'm not about that. Google it, YouTube it. Use it as your own discretion. <laughs> hey, Karen. Yeah, my dad. You want to say hello to everybody? Come say hi. Oh, come on. Okay, you don't come have to. Hi. That's right. She's awesome. I just got the most awesome massage. Karen just finished an awesome massage. I did. This is Karen, everybody. Hello. Look how pretty she is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we met <laughs> in Naples, Florida when I was touring. And you brought your other two friends here. Where are they at? Where are they doing? I did. I thought maybe they'd be here. I just uh, got done with the massage. They must be in the yoga pavilion. Okay. <laughs> so just staying in the yoga pavilion. Cool. Yeah. So just came down and it's just been awesome. This has been amazing so far. So you've been enjoying it? What do you like? I have. Everything. I mean, the people, the bonding. I mean, well, the food is amazing. <laughs> it, it just everything so far. I mean, we really just jump started, and it's just been um, incredible. I mean, come in the summer. <laughs> cool. And the good thing is, it's summer here when it's winter there. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, what are you going? Where were you? Where you're, you're headed up, right? I may jump in the in the infrared sauna because cool. it's available. Sweet. Yes. So I check out. I think someone's in the oxygen chamber, which I just signed up for. Oh, cool. cool. Put my name down. Try to get that in every day. And um, yeah, love it. Thank Sweet. you. That's enough time for me. Yeah. yeah. Me okay. <laughs> cool. People are coming in and coming out. Uh -huh. Yeah. So how much longer is on this thing? I go until as long as I want. It's been 51 minutes. Oh, okay. I'll probably go, I don't know, it depends. Like, there's, 52 like, and a half? There's questions here people ask me. Sorry. I've already answered all of these. Oh, darn. Somebody all, write another question, please. Here's one more. Okay. Todd Frank. Just a shout out to the retreat from Todd and Nanette, who will be there summer 2017. That's June 2017. Wishing we were there now. And thank you, Matt, for your customer service expertise. Looking forward to diving into the two-month superfood kit. They booked early. They didn't book yet, but they're, that's they're saving. Uh -huh. They're saving for this event gotcha. of a lifetime. You think it's worth it? Yeah. <laughs> Just like I wouldn't do it for them. My mom got me to come. <laughs> it's not entirely true. But I'm supporting my mother, yes, but I've always wanted to come here. So that's cool. That's cool. And it's extremely beautiful. Anybody that you know, gets the chance to come here, it's, uh, the view's amazing. So make sure you bring a way to take pictures, lots of pictures and good hiking shoes. And essential oil. <laughs> Tea tree. Oh yeah, for the bug bites, there's, right? Yeah, there's bugs. <laughs> we only just got started at this retreat. We've been, it's one day, two days, one and a half days. No, it's been one, one 24 hours so far. Today's Tuesday? Yeah, we started Monday night, now it's Tuesday night. Yeah. It's been 24 hours, everyone's flying, we still have two weeks to go, or like 12 days. Mm -hmm. We've got lots of stuff going on. Lots. What are the crystals for EMF protection? This is like an addition from a previous question. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ones that glow, the ones with the glow around. These are QBC. Type in QBC on our website, and all the different options would pop up. QBC pendants with QBC cones. And then um, QBC house balancers, computer balancers, and stuff like that. I definitely see this. It seems like not many people are asking questions tonight. I think maybe it's because of the holidays. Maybe I could, uh, let's see, because I was supposed to have a hangout last week, and it didn't happen. But I think these were, OK. I've already done that one. Okay, so we've already done this. I don't know. Can you talk about any specials you have? Any specials on the website? Mm -hmm. Kind of. We have like our entire December and January yeah. Epcot specials going on right now. Okay. Um, and January is like the best there is like of the entire year. So. Yeah, it's like the end of the year. All the stuff's going on. You get my newsletter or something? I'm not computer savvy. I don't have a computer, so no. Uh, here's a comment. Here we go. Hello, I'm a new subscriber. Watched a few videos today and really enjoyed. Thanks. Awesome. I'm glad. 
I'm glad you're watching. So today, um, what we did is, it was the first day, it was the most hardcore, intensive talk, lecturing. It was like setting the, the ground for the rest of the entire retreat. And I was explaining how the food here has been incredible. Every afternoon, it's going to be a gourmet raffi meal. She's loving this. That's good. <laughs> and then um, in the evening time, it's a um, all-you-can-eat dinner buffet. And in the morning, it's all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet with crepes and stuff like that. You got a question? Let's see what it is. I think it's the holidays. Okay, Sonia writes. Hi, Matt. It's the first time I catch you live. There's a replay, so you can watch the replay. Gotcha. I bought moringa leaf powder and chlorella powder today. I intend to put some in my morning smoothie, in which I already put some spirulina, hemp seed heart, and fresh ground flax. Okay. Would you think I should alternate them daily? For example, one day you do chlorella and spirulina, and the next day flax and hemp and seeds and chia. Many, mainly my need is to keep blood sugar from spiking. I metabolize food quickly. I wonder if all together, the spirulina, flax, moringa, chlorella might be too much of a good thing. I really like your hangout. It's value for opinion. I eat like a rabbit, whole food, fresh chicken, fish, almost organic on everything. So that's awesome. You're on a whole foods diet. Um, you're probably like psycho vegan or something. Sorry, no, I'm not a psycho vegan. Uh, I, don't, I don't eat meat, but I have all my friends eat meat so pretty much, except the people here. So. Maybe that was a bad word I should maybe use. <laughs> I don't know. Extreme vegan. Yeah. Uh, I would put all the stuff in <laughs> together. You can change it up, but I would just go ahead and throw it all in a couple teaspoons. David back there is an extreme vegan. He's like, psycho vegan's good. <laughs> no, no, I said psycho vegan's an oxymoron. Oh, uh, it's an oxymoron? Yeah. You know what's an oxymoron? An oxygenated moron. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, well, psycho vegan is like mean slaughter. Right. Okay, so what's, what is happening here is I like to recommend people, you know, it, it's good to switch up things so you get a different variety of nutrition. You could put it all together, but I like your idea of doing something this day and then something the next day, giving your body a break of this and doing that the next day and stuff like that. I like that. Hi, Dopey. This is Kyra, everybody. She's cute. She's the scaredy cat, even though she looks the scariest in terms of like, she looks like a Doberman pincher. She's my baby. She's my baby. I think she loves me the most out of all of them. Maybe not. Okay. What kind of iodine is good to use? Um, Nascent iodine has been known to be pretty good. That's probably what I would recommend. We carry that, so, yeah. All right, guys, it's been an hour. Sometimes we go for two hours when there's lots of questions. Usually there's a lot more questions than this. We skipped last week because I've been so busy. Um, so... Last chance for final questions. <laughs> There's actually like a, a 30 second delay, so now we gotta wait 30 seconds for them to hear your last chance for final questions. Okay. And there's actually a girl in the hyperbaric chamber. Um, Serata's been checking on her. I should probably check on her one more time. And um, there's a couple people with cancer at this retreat, and they're just like living in the hyperbaric chamber for as long as they want, um, which is kind of cool. And uh, all right, guys. It's been a little fun live here at the Raw Food Retreat. We've got B, Brenna. We call her B, Brenna B, and Matt Monarch. And we'll do this again next week. We're going to still be live at the Raw Food World Retreat here, and we'll make it happen. So uh, we'll see you soon. Bye. Ciao.